A special service division invites you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations to drop in at Juffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's where the elite meet to eat. Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, Duffy, you know who's coming down here tonight? Rochester. Rochester. You know the guy. Is, uh, Jack Benny calls him up every week and says, uh, Oh, Rochester, this is Mr. Benny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Duffy, I was thinking, what we need is advertising. Now, how would you like to put on a national-wide radio show from coast to coast? So that the name of Duffy's will be smudged from Cooney Island to the Bronx. <laughs> well, certainly Rochester would be in it. Just think, Duffy. Every week, ten million people will tune in and they'll hear D U F F Y, pasta free S. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, Duffy. How can we miss? Well, we uh, practically got Rochester. Um, all we need now is somebody to take the place of Jack Benny, and uh, we got another Benny show. Uh, where can we get another Jack Benny? Uh, uh, such people can be found. As a matter of fact, I got somebody in mind right now. Who? You'll find out. Uh, goodbye again, Duffy. Now, let's see. Say I get uh, $10,000 of broadcast. Uh, Deduct from that uh, 50 cents for one fiddle lesson to learn to play Love and Bloom. Um, a buck and a half for a toupee. Uh, hey, well, what you doing, Miss Archie? Uh, Eddie, I'm just figuring out what I'm going to do when I take Jack Benny's place. Oh. Left to the jaw, right to the stomach, left to the heart, right to the jaw. What are you doing, Eddie? I'm just figuring out what I'm going to do when I take Joe Lewis's place. <laughs> Don't sneer, Eddie. These jokes that I wrote will make me the king of the cyclowats. <laughs> all that I need is Rochester. That's all, huh? <laughs> Miss Arthur, you is impossible. What do you mean? Can Jack Benny act as good as me? Can uh, Jack Benny write a better script than me? Can Jack Benny be as funny as me? Three out of three. Have a cigar. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm just as funny as he is. <laughs> See that? I made you laugh and I didn't even tell a joke. <laughs> Look, Eddie, just uh, shut your eyes. Listen to this. Hello, Don. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> just listen again. Uh, goodbye, Don. Goodbye, Don. Oh, that's Hitler in Russia. <laughs> Listen, Eddie, don't you recognize Benny when you hear him? You see, uh, the way I got this program figured out, uh, for a character like Jack Benny, I got me. So far, you ain't got much. <laughs> Continue. Uh, then for Mary Livingston, we got Miss Duffy... For Don Wilson, we got Dan Seymour. And for Rochester... Yeah? We got Rochester. <laughs> Your part is uh, practically the same as Rochester, you see. Uh, Rochester is my valet. And I'm your valet, too? No, you're Rochester's valet. <laughs> yeah, sort of a poor man, poor man. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Uh... Hello, Archie. Oh, hello, Miss Duffy. Look at my new bracelet. It's an identification bracelet. Good for blackout. Yeah. Black, what do you mean? Well, when you put the lights out in the living room, the fella can always tell where you are. <laughs> Ain't it a little bit noisy? You should hear Vera Fogarty. She's got a cowbell. <laughs> Miss Duffy, uh, where did you get this couch compass? <laughs> Oh, uh, I got it from my boyfriend, Breckenbridge Hartzenfelder. <laughs> you see, he just finished painting the battleship. The SS... Uh-uh, careful, Miss Duffy. No loose talk. See that poster? Loose lips sink ships. 
Especially with a dame like you with all them sailors that you know. Archie, you're always hitting about me and sailors. Why, the sailors I know wouldn't even fill a cruiser. <laughs> oh, no? I've seen you with that Vera Fogarty. The way you two get trailed on a Sunday, it looks like a convoy. All right, so I know a few sailors. But I never repeat any loose talk. Besides, when you're out with a sailor, how much talking do you do? Well, you shouldn't do no talking. These days, the word is mum. And that goes for Vera, too. Oh, don't worry about Vera. She's doing her bit for the Navy. What do you mean? In case of emergency, the Admiral always knows where the fleet is. I can believe that. Oh, Mr. Benny. Uh, yes, Eddie, uh... What is this, Mr. Benny? Miss Duffy, what would you say if I told you that before the evening's over, I may be the new Jack Benny? I'd say that and hurt the country more than loose talk. <laughs> Get ten thousand dollars a week. Uh, now Benny had Phil Harris. I'll use Van Steeden. He worked cheap. Uh, Sixteen men with Van Steeden is a leader. That's forty-two dollars. Uh, maybe I'll do without Van Steeden. That'll bring it down to forty dollars. Uh, what's the difference? Two bucks. He's got a big name. Uh, well, what else? Uh, oh, Eddie. Yes. Uh, Eddie, give me that pencil and paper. I want to write a letter to Fred Allen. Why? I got to start a feud. <laughs> Let's see. Dear Fred Allenoid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that'll get him. U R A J E R K. Uh, hello. <laughs> well, hiya, Finnegan. Wait. Wait a minute. Let me look at you, Finnegan. Yeah. Hmm. Dennis Day. Uh, Finnegan, how would you like to be Dennis Day in my radio program? Oh, I come on, actually. Just listen to this. Do you do? We got no bananas. Do you? We got no bananas. Do you? Quiet. Quiet, Finnegan. Day is done. <laughs> But maybe we can use you for something else. Uh, stick around. Now, uh, Eddie, watch the cash register. I gotta go out and mail this letter to Fred Allen. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Rochester. You Rochester? Mr. Archie out? Mr. Archie out. Coming back soon? Coming back soon. Man, you're the strippiest looking echo I ever seen. <laughs> So you Rochester. Huh. What do you mean? Huh? You and me. I just can't help feeling that the dissimilarity in our appearance ain't enough to justify the difference in our salaries. <laughs> oh, imagine making all them greenbacks. I don't think of it as making greenbacks. I think of it as a hobby. A hobby, huh? Yeah, collecting pictures of Lincoln. <laughs> You see, out in Hollywood, everything is greener, short boy. Now, don't call me short boy. Because if I had all that money stuffed in my shoes, I'd be just as tall as you are. <laughs> Who stuffs money in their shoes? I don't stuff money in my shoes. 
Of course, I might have a taller mattress than you got. <laughs> uh, Eddie, it's Rochester, man. Uh, Rochester, may I present Mr. Archie? Oh, hello, Mr. Archie. Oh, welcome to Duffy's, Rochester. Great place we got here, ain't it? Well, I've been to a lot of nightclubs, but this is the Maxwell of them all. <laughs> Well, we're planning on having it redecorated, then. Yeah, we're going to take down the wallpaper and turn it over. <laughs> Quiet, Eddie. Uh, Rochester, uh, how do you like working for Jack Benny? Uh, I'd rather not discuss it. Mr. Benny's very sensitive about his frugality. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> pretty cheap, huh? Cheap? Do you know what his toupees are made out of? What? The hair that Carmichael shaved. <laughs> Hmm, bare hair Benny. Yeah, he's bareheaded with or without. <laughs> Rochester, how would you like to leave, Benny, and work with the best comedian in America? Uh-uh. Another offer from Fred Allen. <laughs> nope, not Fred Allen. It's me. You a comedian? Am I a com- I'm notorious for me comedy. <laughs> you ought to see me at a party. I'm a riot. And I do practically nothing. I pour a bucket of water in the piano, let the bathtub run over, stick me head in the goldfish bowl, and I yell, Look, everybody, the Johnstown flood. <laughs> they die. They die, eh? Yeah. They're lucky. <laughs> do you do that kind of thing with all your friends? Well, certainly. Oh, that's why you want me to come around. You're lonesome. Uh, listen, Rochester Believe me, I got a sponsor all lined up And besides, with me, you'll be funnier Than you've ever been in your life Why? I am personally gonna write your joke mm, Like that John Town flood? Even funnier Funnier? Mm. Uh-oh Here comes the Chicago fire <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. That's uh, probably the sponsor now. <clears throat> Very big shot. Uh, hello, Duff. Uh, hello, Mr. D. Uh, yeah, uh, Rochester's here. Uh, we're discussing the radio program to uh, advertise your monstrous organization. <laughs> what? Can he sing? Uh, uh, Rochester, how are you singing? Uh, about like them jokes of yours. <laughs> Beautiful voice. Okay, Mr. D. Uh, Rochester, the uh, sponsor would like to hear you sing. Uh, just a second. First, there's a slight matter of that stuff that adds stature to my mattress. Hmm. You mean money? I don't mean excelsior. <laughs> well, I couldn't pay you anything right away. Uh-uh. This sounds familiar. <laughs> don't worry, Rochester. If this sponsor likes you, money is no object. Go ahead and sing. Music, please. Company, zoo, I'm out, Sunday strolling, company, boo, dig this suit with a belt to boo. What do they say when they see me coming their way? J -j -j Jackson, I'm as sharp as a tag. With a belt in the back Boy, dressed to the bricks Mugging lightly, killing the chicks j, -j, j jackson I'm as sweet as a bee With a fleet in the sea Paying no mind to the conversation With my nose in the air Nevertheless, I swear they holler you ain't only classy, you is fat and you sassy. What do they shout when they see me cutting on out? Just, 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 uh, hurry on back home. Papa, you sharp as a tack. With a belt in the back. With a belt in the back. With a belt in the back. <laughs> Hello? <clears throat> oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, well, how did you like it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Too much gravel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, okay, if you don't want to sponsor this show, I'll find somebody that will. I'll be another Jack Benny in despite of you. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Uh, be with you in a minute, Rochester. Uh, hey, Finnegan. Uh, yeah, I... Finnegan, could you act like a sponsor? Uh, a sponsor? <laughs> I'll come a natural. Good. I'll tell you in a minute what I want you to do. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we're going to act out this radio program of mine now. Miss Duffy, you're going to be Mary Little. I don't forget what I told you, Finnegan. Um, okay, Rochester, we're all set to act out the radio program which I have wrote. Uh, you ready? What have I got to lose? Uh, just wait you hear these jokes now. Uh, okay, folks, let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a few minutes ago, a taxi pulled up to the studio and stopped with a jerk. The jerk got out, and here he is, that funny man. Yeah. This is Jack Archie talking. Where's my announcer? Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. My. <laughs> Uh, Don, what has Triumph Power got that I haven't got? What, Jack? Fuel. Get it, Don? Power. Fuel. <laughs> Rochester, uh... Rochester, did you ever hear a laugh like that? I've been hearing a laugh like that for years. For years, uh, it's been ringing in your ears, huh? <laughs> I can go along with a gag. Yeah, but first you gotta have a gag. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, look who's coming, uh, Mary Duffy. Hello, Jack. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? I'm laughing because I'm happy. I'm happy because my father and mother are in the iron and steel business. The iron and steel business? Yes, my mother irons and my father steals. <laughs> well, uh, Rochester, did that one kill you? <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Uh, Mary, is that a letter from your mother? Yes, this is a letter from my mother, Mrs. Duffy. I'll read it to you. My dear daughter, Miss Duffy, your cousin Randolph was very embarrassed the other day. He walked into a restaurant and said to the waiter, Do you serve crab? And the waiter said, Sure, we serve anybody. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Regards to Jack. Your loving mother, Mrs. Duffy. P.S. Say goodbye to Jack for me. P.P.S. Say goodbye to him for me, too. I'm leaving. <laughs> Rochester, wait a minute. Come back here. The next is your big scene. Well, you call me on the telephone, huh? Every line is a gem. A gem, huh? Mm hmm The phone rings. Hello, Mr. Archie. This is Rochester. Oh, hello, Rochester. You told me to mow your lawn, so I got some of my friends to help me. I figured the mow the merrier. <laughs> gem number one. <laughs> Uh, keep going, Rochester. It gets even better. Say, Mr. Archie, I saw Carmichael the Bear this afternoon, and he didn't have any clothes on. What's that? That should have been a laugh. <laughs> Give me one reason why. Don't you get it? No clothes. Carmichael. Bear. <laughs> you know the trouble, Rochester? You didn't read the line right. Oh, yes, I did, to my eternal shame. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Uh, here comes the thing now that makes you the most important guy in the show. A phone call from your own valley. The phone rings. Answer it, Rochester. Hello, this is Rochester. Hello, Rochester. This is Westchester. <laughs> Chester, how's the gas man? The gas man got a new girl. He just went down to the cellar to meet her. <laughs> to meet her? 
Not only are these laughs bad, but I ain't even getting them. Uh, what do you mean, bad laughs? If the sponsor was here, he'd tell you himself that they're good. I said, if the sponsor was here... Oh, this is, oh, this is, pardon me, sir. Uh, I am a sponsor. Oh, indeed. Sir, uh, sir I am Clifton Finnegan, the flypaper king. <laughs> uh, remember my slogan? Finnegan's flypaper, six for a buck. A bargain for you, but the flies get stuck. <laughs> oh, uh... Uh, Mr. Finnegan, just, uh, what is your flypaper company prepared to offer for this here radio program? Well, this here radio program is so funny, I am prepared to offer a million a week. Hmm. My, my, that's a lot of flypaper. <laughs> a million dollars, eh, Mr. Finnegan? Uh, that is my final offer, one million dollars. Finnegan, your mother just called up and said she sent you to the butchers an hour ago. She wants to know where's the soup meat. Uh, uh, tell her that soup meat costs 20 cents and I only got 15. I... Oh, I'm getting out of here. Wait, wait a minute, Rochester. You see, the million dollars is the corporation's money. The 15 cents is Mr. Finnegan's private money. The uh, rest of his fortune he lost in the stock market. The stock market, huh? That's all, brother. First I get the Johnstown flood, then I get the Chicago fire. And now you give me the crash of 29. So long, brother. Where are you going? Back to that good old California gold rush. Duffy's Tavern, Leavis put a couple of nickels in Duffy's jukebox. Duffy's jukebox, where the feet meet the beat. Well, the platter's spinning, the needle's in the groove, and here's the first number coming up.
Duffy's Tavern was rebroadcast especially for you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America. Thank you.